Navigating the Landmark Workspace. Once your Vectorworks license is activated, you'll be presented with either the Vectorworks Landmark Workspace or the Vectorworks Designer Workspace if you have an evaluation or educational license. When first confronted with any new software application, it can seem a little terrifying. This is perfectly normal, so please don't let it overwhelm you. In this section, we'll take a look at the Landmark workspace, name the different areas, and learn the headline functions of those palettes. We'll then customise some preferences, a process that's a little like organising your desk. You choose how you want things arranged, and what things you want to have easy access to while working. The drawing area itself has a semi-transparent background colour that helps you determine if objects are filled. This background colour won't appear on your final drawings and you can change it if you don't like it. There may be a grid visible on your drawing area. This can be hidden and displayed as required. We'll now have a look at the different areas on the workspace. If you're using an evaluation or educational licence, choose Tools, Workspaces, Landmark and wait a moment for the Landmark workspace to load. On the left of the workspace, you'll find two tool palettes. The basic palette contains 2D tools for drawing simple, regular shapes and more complex, irregular shapes. Many of these objects can be quickly converted to 3D using the push-pull functionality built into their tools. Click on some of the tools. Notice that the toolbar changes as you choose different tools. The toolbar provides different options known as modes for each tool. For example, click the rectangle tool and you'll see the toolbar change to offer you four different ways to draw a rectangle. Click the selection tool again or press X as a shortcut to return to the selection tool. The tool sets palette below the basic palette contains buttons to activate more industry specific tools for performing more specific tasks. Click the Building Shell Toolset icon and notice the tools for creating walls, doors and windows. Many of these tools are hybrid in nature, which means they contain both a 2D and 3D representation of the object. These tools also store information about the object, so you can produce schedules directly from your design. Click the Wall tool. On the toolbar, click the button with a wrench and pencil icon. This will open the Wall Preferences dialog where you can specify the kind of wall you want to draw. Click Cancel. You'll learn more about walls later, but many of the tools in the tool sets will have a Preferences button just like this. The View Bar can be customised to include different elements, but is used to control the current, class, layer and scale, for example. It has menus for saving views and for zooming your view. It has menus to change to preset 3D views and to render your 3D model. Click on the Utility menu and add Layer Scale to your view bar. If you don't have a large screen, you can also remove Zoom Long from the view bar. The Attributes palette has a menu for assigning different fill colours and styles to 2D objects. It has a menu for changing the pen weight, colour and style for objects. You can also use it to vary the opacity and transparency of objects on your plan. The Snapping palette has controls to help you draw with accuracy and precision. For example, the Snap to Object facility will highlight the names of points on objects when the mouse is held over them. Smart points draws temporary, helpful guidelines on the screen to assist you in aligning new objects with existing elements on your design. The Quick Preferences area on the right of the toolbar is for preferences you may wish to change frequently. Click on the arrow to the right to access a list of features that can be added to the Quick Preferences area. Select Auto Join Walls. Also select Auto Save Display Light Objects, Show Clip Cube, Show Grid, 
Show other objects in edit modes. Show page boundary. And show rulers. Note that you can also access further document preferences and Vectorworks preferences from this menu. Document preferences are specific to the current file, whereas Vectorworks preferences remain active for every Vectorworks session. The navigation palette is used to manage and navigate the organisational structure of your drawing. You'll find out more about this later. The Object Info palette is similar to a Properties palette or an Inspector palette that you may have used in other applications. Click the Rectangle tool on the Basic palette and draw a rectangle any size anywhere on your drawing area. The rectangle will remain selected. Look at the Object Info palette and notice that it displays information about the rectangle. Change the values in the Height and Width fields. Notice the rectangle changes size. Press delete or backspace on your keyboard to delete the rectangle. Click the selection tool again. The resource browser is used to access and manage libraries of objects you can use in your design. There's further information on the resource browser in the following section. The message bar at the bottom of the screen is often overlooked. If Vectorworks is unable to complete the task you've requested, it will display helpful information about the failure here to help you determine the problem.